Well, hello and welcome back. We've got two topics tonight, horizontal tangent lines and graphing derivatives. So let's start with horizontal tangent lines. Now, this is a pretty simple idea, and if you ever forget, just take two seconds and sketch it out, and it should seem pretty natural, I hope. So let's go ahead and sketch an x and y axes. If I have a horizontal tangent line, um, so let me draw just a random parabola here, and my horizontal tangent line, obviously horizontal is like the horizon straight across there, and it's touching my curve once. There's something special you should know about horizontal tangent lines. Now when I say something special, remember this whole half of the course that we've been talking about is the word derivative, which of course is just another way to say slope. So when I say horizontal tangent lines, something should really pop in your head about the slope. And if it doesn't pop in your head right away, sketch a horizontal line and think about it. What's special about this horizontal line? Something you learned back in middle school. It has a slope of zero. And that's huge. And that's going to be half the battle. Every time you think horizontal tangent line, so draw a horizontal line, just remember that it has a slope of zero. So exercise one. Determine the point or points, notice it may be plural, so there might be more than one, if any, at which this function has a horizontal tangent line. Okay, so if you see this and you get stuck, draw a horizontal line and ask yourself, what do I know about the slope? Remember, this is calculus, we're thinking slope. And it should be obvious the slope is zero. So what does that tell you to do to your problem? Well, it says, find the slope and set it equal to zero. So how do you find slope? Well, all you do is you take that equation you have and you take its derivative. So we've got a nice easy power rule. This guy's derivative, the derivative of y is dy dx or y prime. Uh, my power rule says that 6x squared plus 6x, and of course that derivative is 0. And it says horizontal line means take that derivative and set it equal to 0. It's all about factoring. I think we can pull out a GCF of 6x, and I'm left with x plus 1. If I tee it up, I get x equals 0, and x equals negative 1. Now just be sure you answered the question. It does say determine all points. At the moment, I don't have points. I have x values. So I need to get each of their corresponding y values. So let's pretend, not pretend, let's say x is 0, and all I'm going to do is evaluate f of 0. So I'm going to get uh, 0 cubed plus 3 times 0 squared minus 1 gets me a negative 1, just substituting that into my original equation. And then I'll evaluate f of negative 1. So I've got 2 times negative 1 cubed is negative 2. Negative 1 squared is 1, so plus 3 minus 1. Uh, that gets me a y value of 0. So I would say there are two points where I have horizontal tangent lines. Now, can you picture that, what that looks like? Hopefully. Remember, this was an x cubed function, so that tells me it looks something like this. And I can draw two places where I have a horizontal tangent line, one here and one here. So it's okay to have more than one horizontal tangent line. Remember, we're just saying the slope of that line is zero. Now, notice you'll have a horizontal tangent line any place your graph has a what? A max or a min. So if I have a max, I have one. If I have a min, I have one. For however many maxes or mins you may have, you will have many horizontal tangent lines. Another big part we're going to have to deal with is being able to graph derivatives. Now I can't keep stressing enough, derivative is just another word for slope. So when we say graph the derivative, we are really making a graph of slopes. So I want you to copy these down. Um, we're going to do lots of little sketches. And uh, just keep practicing saying to yourself, slopes. All right, we're given a nice quadratic here. And I want you to picture a bunch of tangent lines. And the first slope I always look for is the easiest slope, is a slope of 0. Where can you put a tangent line so this has a slope of 0? Well, remember, a slope of 0 is a nice horizontal line. So I'm going to put a nice horizontal line here, whoops, as tangent as I can there, and that has a slope of zero. So what that tells me is I'm going to go and plot zero right where that matches up. That was when x equals one, so I go to my axis and plot zero. Remember, I am graphing slopes. 
Now think about this. All of the slopes to the right of my horizontal line are positive. If I put tangent lines on there, would you agree all of these have positive slopes? Everybody to the left of my horizontal line has a what type of slope? Negative. Okay. So if I have a positive slope, I'm graphing a positive point. If I have a negative slope, I'm graphing a negative point. Now we're just going to kind of estimate what we think the slopes are. And you, there's no right or wrong answer. As long as you're in the ballpark, we're in good shape. I'm going to say this has a slope of approximately maybe 2. So I'm going to go up at this point, and I'm going to graph maybe a height of 2. And I'm going to say, okay, this slope here is steeper than it is here. And by steepness, if you're, if you're ever stuck with that, think about, you know, skiing down the hill. Is this like a safer slope to ski on, or is this safer? I mean, to me, that looks a lot steeper than it does here. So I'm going to say this is steeper than 2, maybe a slope of, I don't know, 2.5 or 3. Um, and as I go up, I'm saying, okay, this is even steeper, so i got to plot that point even higher and higher as I go. Now I'll do the same on the other side. Now just keep in mind, these are negative numbers. If you were to assign a slope to this, I would say it's pretty similar to this one. So if I said this was positive 2, I'm going to say this one is negative 2. And I'm going to plot a point around negative 2. Again, I would say this slope is pretty similar to this one except it's negative. So if I said this was 3, I'm going to say this is negative 3. And notice these are getting steeper, but they're negative, so they're getting more negative. So I'm going to plot more negative points. And if I were to connect them, whoops, I would get a nice linear equation. I'm sorry, I'm connecting as best I can there. Okay, so this green graph represents f prime. If my blue graph is f, this is a graph of f prime. It is a graph of the slopes. Okay, it's a graph of the slopes. So remember, the easiest slope to start with is any time you have a slope of zero, and then just talk yourself through it. Positive slopes versus negative slopes. So you'll notice again, if they're positive, they're going to be above the x-axis. If they're negative slopes, they're going to be below the x-axis. Another thing you'll notice is that notice I'm going to say this has one hump, okay, one hump to it. When I take its derivative, it loses a hump. Think about this. This is a parabola. Let's say its equation is y equals x squared. If I take its derivative, I now get y prime equals 2x. I went from being a parabola to being a line, linear. So that's why I know it's a straight line. All right, let's go ahead and sketch this one. Again, we'll, we'll call this graph G. And remember, we want to graph G prime. That's my goal is to graph G prime. So keep in mind, zero slopes are the easiest slopes to find. And those are your horizontal tangent lines. Is there any place you could draw a horizontal tangent line? I would definitely say yes. I would put one right here and right here. That means I'm going to go to those points and graph a point of zero. That's where I have slopes of zero. Okay, I'm always starting with those two points. Now, I like positive slopes, so I'm going to start on this end. Would you agree all of these slopes are positive? That means when I graph them, they're all going to be above the x-axis. Okay, so I'm going to start. I'm just going to throw some tangent lines on there. I'm going to use some blue. I'm going to put a tangent line there, 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 there. Would you say those slopes are getting steeper or less steep? And again, just think of it as a ski slope. Not very steep, steeper, steeper, really don't want to be skiing down it at that point. I would say they're getting very, very steep. That just means they're getting higher. So if I say this one has a slope of about 1, then just make sure that my slopes are getting higher. I'm going to say those are going up. I'm just plotting higher points. Let's look in this section between my two zero slopes. How would you describe all of these tangent lines? I would say they're definitely negative. Okay, those are negative slopes until I get to my horizontal slopes, there, horizontal tangent lines. So these are negative. Now, where are you more negative? At this first tangent line or the second tangent line? Who's steeper? 
and I'm just going to plot some points. I know they're negative, so they're going to be below the x-axis. And I'm going to say it's probably steepest maybe there. And then that's a little less steep. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to look at these slopes. Now I'm just going to put some tangent lines on to help me. And ask myself, who's the steepest? Well, I would say this is very steep if I were to ski on it. And this is getting less steep, getting closer to a slope of zero. So maybe this has a positive, notice a positive slope, maybe a slope of two. This one's much more steeper, maybe a six, that's even steeper. Maybe like a 11. And now I'll connect them carefully. And this green graph is a graph of G prime. Now again, notice the little hump idea. There was one, two horizontal tangent lines, and when I take the derivative, there is now only one. And that should make sense. That's a graph of, you know, some sort of cubic, and when I take its derivative, I get a quadratic. I lose a hump. I lose that exponent. So I went from having a cubic, two humps, to now having just one. All right, copy this sketch down in your notebook, and you try to draw it this time. Remember, start with your horizontal slopes. Pause it and see what you get. It doesn't have to be exact, just in the ballpark. When I say in the ballpark, basically we have to have the same zeros in the correct spots. So I see three horizontal tangent lines, so I can mark three zeros. I have a slope of zero there, a slope of zero there, and a slope of zero there. And again, what I mean in the ballpark, we should have the same parts above the x-axis and the same parts below the x-axis. So I'm going to say all of these are negative slopes, therefore my derivative graph, my graph of the slopes, should be below. And I'm just going to put some tangent lines on to talk myself who's steeper. I'm going to say this is a very negative slope. I don't know, maybe way down here. This is a little less negative and even less negative. So I'm going to make them closer to my x-axis. In this section, I would say I have positive slopes. That means between these two horizontal tangent lines, these two slopes of zero, I better be above the x-axis. Um, I would say I'm less steep, the steepest, and then less steep again. So I'm going to say little steep, I'm the steepest there, and less steep there. This section, I have all negative slopes. And again, if I stick some tangent lines on it, um, just to try to figure out who's the steepest. I would say I'm probably the steepest around there, so I'm going to make that my most negative point. These are a little less steep, and then they kind of go close to zero again. And then everybody on this side has a positive slope, so I'm going to be above the x-axis. And I'm just looking at that steepness again. Am I steeper early on or later on? I would probably say later on. So I know these are going to get gradually larger. So as I connect, I just, again, need to be in the ballpark of where I am. So if this is F prime, and my red graph was F. And I just want to stress, the negative slopes should be below the x-axis, the positive slopes above, these negative slopes need to be below, notice they're all below, and then these positive slopes above the x-axis. Now, the absolute valley graph is a very special graph. And think about what's special about it. Now remember, we're talking slope. Do you ever have a slope of zero? Hopefully you said no. No slope equal to zero. Okay? And the other thing that's special about it is everybody on this side has a slope of whatever the line is. Let's say a slope of one, negative one in this case. And everybody on this side has a slope of positive one. And that's because this is linear. This is a line, right? Anybody on this line has the same slope, and anybody on this line has the same slope. Now, we've talked about this before. At this point, because it comes to a sharp corner, and that's what we like to call 90 degrees, is a corner, the slope does not exist. Okay, it does not exist on sharp corners. So I'm not going to plot zero when I go to graph that. Keep that in mind. So I'm going to say everybody to the left of this corner has a slope of negative 1. So I'm going to come in at negative 1. I do not exist there, so I'm going to leave an open circle. I do not have a slope there. And everybody on this side has a slope of positive 1. 
So on this side, I'm going to come in at a positive one. And again, I'm going to have an open circle here because I do not exist at that point. There is no slope. So my graph kind of looks a little goofy. It's just two straight lines because there are really only two slopes to this absolute value graph, a negative and a positive. Now, here's one more unique graph. This is y equals the cubed root of x. Okay, now, would you say this has any zero slopes anywhere? Any place you could draw a horizontal tangent line? Well, this is gradually getting larger and this is gradually getting smaller. I would say no. So this is another case where there are no slopes equal to zero. But it does have another special slope. At some point, we have a slope that does not exist, or we like to say undefined. Can you see where that slope is? When does a graph have an undefined slope? Well, remember, if it's a vertical line, the slope is undefined. That's a number divided by zero, which can't happen. And I would say I could draw a vertical tangent line right at x equals zero. So I want to be very clear, right at x equals zero, the slope does not exist. Okay, so that's a special graph. The slope does not exist there. So my goal is to graph this guy's derivative. All right, so let's think. We've got, if I put my tangent lines on here, notice my slopes are positive, and are they getting bigger or smaller? Am I getting steeper or less steep? Well, I would say I'm pretty, like, I'm getting pretty flat here. That's an easy slope to ski down. But as I go up, they're going to get very, very steep. So I would say I start off pretty small, and as I go up, I get larger and larger and larger. Now let's check the other side out. Put some tangent lines on there. Do you start off steep or do you get more steep? Well, I would say this is steeper than it is here. This is almost flattening out. So I'm pretty steep here and I'm getting less steep. So I'm starting high and I'm going lower. Now remember, we did not have a slope of zero. So you cannot touch the x-axis. You do not have a slope of zero. Okay, you also don't have any negative slope, so you shouldn't be below the x-axis. And at x equals zero, your slope does not exist, so you shouldn't touch x equals zero. So I'm saying the derivative is going to go up like this and like this. Okay, and I have that undefined slope in the middle. So if this is y, this is my y prime. Well, we'll get lots of practice tomorrow with graphs of derivative and horizontal slopes. So remember, when they say horizontal tangent line, I want you to picture a horizontal line and say it has a slope of zero. Well, that's all for tonight, and we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night.